Maureen McCormick. Hello. Come on in. We're live. I like live. You do? Live it's exciting, right? It is. Live is the best. It is, isn't it? Live is live. You know why live is so good? I feel alive when it's live. You do, right? I do. You know why I like live? Why? Because you don't have to do any work after. Like it's already, it was live. I know. Like I know. You, it's done. Right. It's, it's like gone, and like you're on with the next live. Yeah. Right. Right. It right. should all be live. No editing. Yeah. No nothing. Right. Just do it Love live. That. Right. Right. Agreed. Yes. You guys should have done the Brady Bunch live. It would have been so much easier for we everybody. Should have. There would have been no laugh track, which is a good thing. You think so? Well. I actually think laugh tracks kind of work back then, mm -hmm. but whenever I hear la laugh tracks today, it sounds very laugh tracky. Yeah. So. Do you think that's because yeah. they're overdone, or do you think yeah. that's because of all just, your experiences with them? Like I can't hear another laugh track. I just think they worked back then, yeah. and that they kind of don't work anymore. What do you yeah. think that is? Just audiences kind of getting used to it and just seeing how it's not authentic anymore. And they're yeah, like, eh. I mean, I think authenticity mm -hmm. is is extremely important nowadays. Yeah. yeah. And TV was really different back then too. Like now totally. there yeah. is there is a lot more. People do want realism yeah. in TV now whereas back then they wanted to kind of Crazy away. fantasy, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. something entirely different. And it's still, different. I mean, those crazy fantasies, I think we actually all still need yeah. and desire, uh -huh. right? Because we need them from this crazy life. Yes. Sometimes, my, my heart's but... heart's fluttering. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Mine is, too. Whoa. Oh, my God. My heart is so fluttering because we're live. Yes, yes, we are. But yes. um, I think that also that you can just see authenticity today m more than ever. Definitely. Definitely. Right. And there's more there's more space for it. Yes. You know what I mean? There's more Which avenues and thing. venues for it. I think that so. That means we're growing. Yeah. Right. Right. Do you yeah. feel like uh, 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 you're still evolving and growing as a performer and all that? Is all that uh, very, very important to you? It is. Yeah? It really is. It's like, why else, Why do it otherwise? Yeah. Like, if, you're, if you feel stale or that you're not, then it's probably time to not do it anymore. I mean, right. I like things that that are kind of on the edge and live and and in the moment. Did you and want to always keep acting? or Because I would imagine you start Brady Bunch when you're a kid. And then you do that for a while. It becomes, you know, the biggest TV show ever. Mm -hmm. and, and then once you're done with that, isn't there a part of you that's kind of like, I want to get away from all this? I've never really had that. I've always just really loved... You know what I'm doing. I mean, I was I was doing it um, for like six years before I even did that show, mm -hmm. and um, loving it, and just felt very lucky that um, that it kind of came my way and fell into my lap, and just by chance because it was something. We knew nobody in the show in show business. My father was a school teacher. My mom was a housewife, and um, so it was just something that was really kind of in my blood. And that I mean, I grew up on TV and admired, you know, the Carol Burnetts and the Lucille Balls and the Mary Tyler Moores and the Dick Van Dykes and and um, so many shows. That Girl, um, uh, so many things, um, and. Um, so it's something that, that I've always been really, really passionate about and um, just always want to uh, be better yeah. and, and, and push myself you where know, you, and try new things. Where do you live now? Here or L.A.? Um, or neither. Gosh, I wish I could say I'm bicoastal. Yeah, like New York girl, California girl. But, but you're I'm, not. I'm ba <laughs> but I want to be in my heart, <laughs> right? Because I think New York is so incredibly cool. But uh -huh. um, I'm pretty much in California. That's where I'm. I was born and have lived my whole life. I did do a Broadway play here in New York. I was going to ask you how much. Stage and I lived here for a while, done. and it yeah. was well stage work. I mean, gosh, it's it's. There's nothing like it. You know why? It's live. That's it. It's scary That's and it's it. live. Yep, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no editing. What's the What's the difference? Because I would imagine, like, in terms of of keep feeling like you can keep things fresh, because when you're doing a TV show, episode mm -hmm. after episode after episode, like, you do at some point have to get tired of playing the same character, like, in terms of variety. Like, is it is it more difficult to do that, or is it more difficult to do the same play every night, night after night after night after night? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. 
I would say for me. Yeah. But I haven't done a play for a while. Like Grease on live when I was doing that was the last thing I've done live. And I found that more challenging because I grew up <clears throat> doing TV and movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was kind of like my safety net. Yeah. <clears throat> which is so crazy. And, and, but it's, it, I think they're both incredibly challenging to keep it spontaneous and to just stay in the moment, like in right. everything in life, you know? I mean, that's like such a great thing to live for and, and aspire to. Well, and those yeah. are two very different styles of acting, right? Because TV and movie is very nuanced and subtle. And then when right. you're on stage, you have to be much bigger. Did right. you find that transition difficult or? Um, I guess, you know, I've always been more comfortable mm. with the TV movie one because it's just what I grew up with, right? you know? Um, uh, but man, I mean, to go see a great, incredible live play, nothing like it, but, you know, they're all such amazing, uh, mediums. Mm -hmm. Have you done stage acting, Sam? Uh, I spent some time in the theater. Did uh, you? When high school. Were you a main (laughs) role? (laughs) No, 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 no. I had nine different parts in On the Town. Is that? I don't oh, even yeah. know what on the town is. Oh, it's in, three in sa- oh yeah, three when? sailors. When? Uh, when I was in high school. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I had, Why are uh... you guys laughing about that? That's well, so cool. Because pl- doing Grease on Broadway and being in the drama hey, club is you know what? slightly it different. It was not a club. It was much more elite. Than <laughs> oh, I see. I see. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It seems like it must have been elite if if you had to play nine parts. I'm sure there well, were just tons of people <laughs> just dying for. Her. I was a comedic savant at the time, so I they see. decided to use me as a utility person. <laughs> <laughs> I danced in a sailor outfit. I was an Indian man at one point. I played a gay man hailing a taxi. I love that you were a savant. In one play? In one play. How challenging. I know. I put on all these different (laughs) mats. See, me and Marie, we have something going on here. That is so cool. Yeah. I agree. To play all those different characters Mm -hmm. in, what, one hour and a half? Yeah. Well, runtime was four and a half hours. (laughs) (laughs) It was a bit of a marathon play. Yeah. Yeah. Although, and and it probably had nothing to do with the fact that it's very difficult to get high school boys to join drama. Right, right. Well, I also, I grew up, my parents used to make me sing show tunes for company. Oh my God, I want to grow up in your family. Like, that's like, that's how I grew up. It was odd, though, because I'm singing like romantic duets with my older sister while making eye contact. And my parents are just like, (laughs) I don't believe it. I don't believe you want to fuck her. (laughs) 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 Or maybe you did. Yeah, I know. Deep down. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But I think you guys had, had, it was very different. Like, you would probably enjoy singing show tunes, whereas, like, uh, Mike was like, it was more of almost. He no, I think he loved it. I can tell. Yeah, look, on at, his the, face. look at the glimmer in my eye. Uh, right you now. do have a glimmer. But it was he just retells about... the story now, as in, like, oh, I, I, I it was like torture. I hated it. But yeah. He, he loved, loved it. it. Oh, he I'd, did sh- love I'd it. show up downstairs in a tux and tap shoes, being like, oh, is company over, mommy? <laughs> <laughs> can gosh. I get up on a table, yeah. mommy? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, let's sing All I Ask of You. <laughs> again and again yeah. and again. Again, please. Yes, that's exactly. were you, One more time. What, no. were you, what were your mom's favorite show tunes for you and your sister? Uh, a lot of Phantom of the Opera. Oh, that's like it. really romantic. Real romantic. A lot of A Whole New World, like Aladdin. Ooh, what? That's ooh, like, that's like. I love that. Yeah. I personally, whenever I would like strike out on my own and do solo stuff, it was Jesus Christ Superstar. That's cool. Yeah, I sang the, oh, if you are the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, since puberty and blunts has kind of ruined my voice, but back then I had, I had the voice of an I, angel. I, wait, you still do. I can hear it. Oh, thank you. It's really this is the best day of my life. Yeah, I, I can't believe that you're still like uh, the, she still finds you charming after you just said you were singing a whole new world with your sister. Yeah, I love that. Right. I want to be in your family. All right. You don't in. think there's something you <laughs> don't think there's in. something odd about a brother and a sister singing that that hey, song together? A magic look, carpet. Look at line? our show. I guess so. Greg and Marsha. Yeah. I mean, come on. There was wasn't if anybody. There, you know. I yeah. mean, we all were. Yeah. So yeah. The singing same wasn't thing. the the singing wasn't the weird part. It was the fact that we were posed in prom picture pose <laughs> <laughs> while, while doing it. That might have been weird to people. She's like whispering you, into her did ear. Did your parents video all that? I have it somewhere. Yeah, there's certainly, uh, unless fun. it got destroyed in the divorce, which actually could be true, but uh, the there's, really, there's some of it somewhere. The really disturbing part of it is that they were dressing Mike up as Jasmine and his sister up as Aladdin, so I don't really know what was... I look good in parachute pants well, and a belly he shirt. he seems like he turned out okay to me, so... Well, you know, yeah. we just met. He still has that glimmer. <laughs> That's true, but first impressions can be deceiving. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's, I guess... Uh, 
there was weird uh, on screen chemistry when you guys were doing the Brady's between. But you know what? What? That's because the girls came from one side and the boys came from the other. Even as characters, yeah. you weren't like brothers and you were brothers and sisters by marriage. You were half brothers right. and sisters, but not really. We weren't, you know, not not blood. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like even in real life, like a half brother and a half sister can still like hook do whatever up. they want. Exactly. Exactly. I've it's known a... several cases of that. To have happen. you? Oh yeah. Especially yeah. with like, I know I have a buddy who grew up with like his mom dating this other guy for like fifteen years, so they became friends with his, with his kids, and you know right. it, it became this inter thing. But she's a hot woman now, and mm-hmm. after like you know fifteen years of living together, their parents have since split. They uh, had some sex just to kind of like you know, <laughs> yeah, just to. to Knock it out. Well, you gotta you gotta hit that tension Ugh. right in the center. You know what I mean? Pierce the tension. That's what I've been telling. And my that way it dissipates. This entire time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sis, what are we gonna do about this tension? I mean, it is unbearable. She's like, what tension? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was this one sided? This is. Uh... I'm joking. <laughs> Kidding. Just joking. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no birth defects with half brothers and half sisters. That's if you guys true. aren't blood related, that's true. You can have children. The whole deal. So that's. <laughs> It's a lot of it's a lot of good news out there, yeah. Mike. You guys are related, unfortunately. Um, yeah, well, you know, so, I, I, I want to see the birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work out as well. Is there anything uh, when you put out your book? Yeah. Is there anything in hindsight that you were like, ah, I didn't need to write that for everybody to see? Because I always wonder that. Like you always hear, like people write books, and of course they want to tell like the whole true story, but. But then, like, I've heard people who years later are like, I didn't really realize that this book just lives forever. Right. And it's always on the page. Right. I mean, I think everything, it, it's so crazy, but we're such a world anymore where everything you say, whether it's on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, everything we put out there, mm-hmm. it's there forever. Yeah. Um. So, um. you know, I think I'm actually pretty much very aware of that mm-hmm. um and um yeah i think it's important to be uh careful but yet really honest yeah with what you say yeah. and true um but no you know i've been through a lot and i think that your truth if you've been able to survive hard things can help other people and i in the end um really believe that that when you share you can really help others and and that's a great thing and yeah the other good thing about the amount of information that's out there is the turnover so it's yeah. like if you talk about you know spending time when you were young doing drugs that becomes a big story this week and then it is it all it's always there but there's such a turnover there's that it's like, what's the story next week? What's anymore? the story now? What's the story now? There, isn't it amazing yeah. the turnovers of everything like right now mm-hmm. yeah. in our culture? Yeah, it's I mean, it's crazy. I, I don't even know what to come on here and talk about anymore because it's <laughs> like, like you want. It used to be you'd come on, you'd kind of talk about what's in the news, right? But it's all so temporary. Like it's just this is just today's news. Tomorrow, none of this is going to count. It's going to be a whole new thing tomorrow, <laughs> and it's not going to matter. So it's like, what are you going to do? Come on and talk about, like, here's my opinion Yesterday? on what's happening. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's crazy. Moving it's crazy. At a very ridiculous pace. And it's crazy pace. how much information yeah. is out everywhere. Yes. You know? Yeah. How do you feel about, because you're on Twitter. Yeah. You're Mo McCormick 7. Everybody knows this. Um, how do you feel about the, the level of closeness that that fans can now have to somebody like you? Meaning that, you know... For most of your career, people didn't have, unless they wrote you a letter right. and found out what your fan mail address is or something, right. they don't have access to just immediately tell you right. it's just a person at home. Here's what I think of what you just did. Right. You know, I haven't really been on Twitter a whole time. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to ever do that that whole social media thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I was afraid of it. And I'm still like going... Wow, and I, I think it's it blows my mind actually at how much time we can lose in our lives by no seriously. No, I know we I'm were literally we're, like right before like, you walked in, right and, before and, you walked yeah. in, talking about me having a two-hour argument with one of the listeners and of I, this I, show. <laughs> <laughs> just a listener who was like, <laughs> just... but I I wonder how healthy mm. it. 
is. It's totally bad. Yeah. And I wonder, it's just still a bizarre concept to me. Yeah. It's very, very nice to be able to connect Mm -hmm. with so many people and express your opinions in a world where free speech is, is a great thing. And I think we can all learn from each other. And it's like so weird to me right now, first of all, how divided our country is. Yeah. yeah. Right. And hopefully somehow we'll be able to connect more because we are so split. I'm hoping. I don't that... think it's going to happen. No, we're going to crop dust and the I country with psychedelics. And I hear everyone saying that. <laughs> what? We're going to crop dust the country with psychedelics, and eventually we're all going to realize that we're on a rock hurtling through an infinite abyss. And, you know, pretty much we haven't. Mike Cannon is, time on here. is a huge advocate of psychedelics. So it kind of a lot of conversations go back to right, right. mushrooms and psychedelics. I got it. Because okay. he, I mean, he thinks everybody should be doing it because of the perspective that it's given yeah. you, correct? Right. Empathy and attachment or connectivity to other people. Yeah. Yeah, it's been lovely. <laughs> That's why this experience has been so good. Yes. You're on mushrooms right now. Precisely. Right, I see. I see. <laughs> but I don't know if it's going to make people feel more connected because I feel like uh, it's easier to find people who just, like, agree with you. And you can... Where? On, online. Like, on Twitter, you could just all of a sudden find this community of people who just agree with everything you believe in. And that way you can just build walls around yourselves because you have right. these people right. that are saying, no, you're right. Don't worry about right. the Everybody right. else is crazy. Right. You're right. Right. And it's, you it's, don't question it's it. It's such a crazy, crazy thing. Um, but I do think, I mean, you know, without getting political. Yes. Like, I really do like listening to both sides. I really like um you know, even if it's something that I don't in my heart agree with, I mm-hmm. think it's really, really important to listen and somehow, you know, try to work together. Yeah. And and because if we don't, mm. is anything really going to change? No, nothing's going to get done. Right? Yeah. You know? Just and we a... need stuff to get done, right? So. Yeah. It would be helpful. Yeah. It would be good. Yeah. Did you spend any 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 time uh, uh, with psychedelics? Did I? Yes. Um, I have tried them in the past. Yes. Did you enjoy yourself? Um, no. You did not. <laughs> no. See, Mike, I tend to believe Maureen McCormick instead of you. Did you mix it with cocaine? Because that could certainly send things spiraling. He's I've asking. Had, I've had friends that have done mushrooms and been like, I know what to add to this. <laughs> <laughs> A heart racing narcotic. Not yeah, right, right. Then, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. No, back in the seventies, I did try it, and it was. A crazy thing, and I wrote about that in the book. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Sounds like me and Mo need to have a field trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think she just not, she didn't do it right? I think you just got to do it around the right people oh. with the right objective in mind. If you're doing it, like we said before, to party, then it's a very different experience. If you're going into it with self discovery on your mind, I did self discover. Okay. Yes. What did you self discover? To I well, oh gosh. Um, that I think that was the last time for me. <laughs> <laughs> this, age, this is not for me. Why did it you know, not agree with you so much? I just, um, you know, I guess more than anything, uh, I like um, being um, sober. Yes. I just do. There's you a know, control I, to it? Um, to being sober? Yeah. 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 And I I like that. I I... Uh, well, that's where we already differ. You don't like control? <laughs> no, sober. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> sobriety. You're yeah, just anti. Real boring. I, I haven't see. drank since January 2nd, and I am itching out Are of my you? skin. Are you? Not really. It's just uh, I am certainly feeling things in technicolor. So <laughs> it's uh, it's an interesting experience. Right now experience. being sober? Yeah. Oh, you mean like your emotions are an all-time high? Yeah, but I'm rebounding way quicker than I would. Like, I went through a five-day tailspin that ended yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I find that if I'm not pouring downers down my face, then I can kind of hop right out of it when my mind clears, as opposed to still fe- feeling like that low vibration and feeling like shit. 
I see. So like yeah. you can get out of the bad mood easier now. Yeah. I mean, it's depression. It's not a bad mood. It's something I deal with. Yes. Constantly. Well, but, I didn't mean to trivialize anything. Well, right? you know what, Sam? I don't so. like how you t- said it was the frownies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so you get your little saddies going. When, when you're down in the muck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's easier uh, when you're sober yeah. to get out of it. Yeah, I think so. Or, you know, maybe not easier, but it's just a quicker rebound. That's a, that's how that's what happened with me in therapy. It's why I've, uh, you know, it, it's so easy for me personally to get caught up in my brain because it's kind of, it's like incessantly ever moving unwanted thoughts. They do that, don't they? They certainly they do, crazy especially brains? when you're mentally ill like myself. So it's like it's <laughs> Aren't like a, we all a little mentally ill. I would hope so. Right? I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that's part of consciousness, but a lot of people right. don't want to cop to it because right. it makes them feel uncomfortable. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, We're but all this crazy. is one, but We're this is one of those things we talk way. about that's now available forever online. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're gonna eventually listen to it and be like, "Wow, Papa was going through a tough time." <laughs> how many How many kids do you have? I have zero, but I do assume. You? But you're married. I am married. I just got married in September. Did you? But yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm blowing smoke inside my wife. So you don't think you're you think you're infertile? No. Oh yeah. Dude, why, why do you think I've that? heard my dick cough. Oh, that's terrible. We've been having sex and my dick just goes <laughs> <laughs> So no kids coming out of that. I assume not. Yeah. Unless, yeah, unless medically I'm, speaking. Unless I'm, bur- I'm birthing a half human, half locust. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a bummer. Not really. You okay with it? If it happens, it happens. If not, I have a godson. It's great. I just feel like you have a lot of teaching in you. Like you've been in, in here already, like trying to like get these lessons across. Well, I do I, I coach sometimes. So what that gives me a psychedelics. I, I, kids. Yeah. I, uh, psychedelics. I dose their little yeah. water bottles with just micro <laughs> just little little pinky nail size of mushrooms. Uh, I coach soccer sometimes and I've coached basketball in the past. And that to me is especially in Brooklyn now because I do it every once in a while. But it's important because a lot of these kids are growing up with every pr- privilege known to man. So they're extremely spoiled and soft. So a lot of why they like me as a coach is because I'm the militant guy that's just going to be like, Cut the fucking bullshit, soft Brooklyn. Like what? Some fifth, five-year-old kid. I was calling them soft the entire practice. <laughs> I was like, fucking New Brooklyn, unbelievable. New Brooklyn, soft as tissue paper. The next week, a, one of the dads came over, just stood next to me. He's like, "What's up, Coach Mike? How you doing?" I'm like, "How you doing?" He's like, "So, New Brooklyn, huh?" And I'm like, like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Boy, these kids are listening." <laughs> are you? Are you from Brooklyn? I live in Brooklyn. I'm but from. Where are you uh, from? I'm from Manhattan. I grew up in uh, the first outside of West Point, then in Rockland County, and then I've lived in the city since I uh, graduated college. And what about you? Where are you from? Westchester, New York. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Right outside so, the city. Nice. And where do you, where do you live? Scarsdale. Scarsdale. Wood Westchester. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Here, New York. Here. You yeah. get so bashful about Scarsdale because it's such a lovely town. Scarsdale? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess. it's. it's... You should be proud of yourself. You think so? Yeah, that's a nice place <laughs> I mean, to I set up I mean, I call it the best Chester. Oh, well, that's that's kind of over-encompassing of a county that has its problems. People don't understand the difference. I you know, know. Ex- you That's know. what I'm saying. Sorry. People just take it for what it is, you Fair. know what I mean? <laughs> and that's what I try to get across, that kind of a message. Okay. Man, oh, man. Well, we should talk about why you're here, Maureen. Yes. I feel should. like we've talked about a lot, but yeah. uh, we, we, I do want to talk about uh, what you're doing uh for the American Heart Association. Yeah, yeah. It's the Go Red for Women Red Dress Collection uh, presented by Macy's tonight. It's at the Hammerstein Ballroom. It is. It is. And I'm, I'm really, really honored to be a part of it. Um, uh, heart disease is the number one killer in women today, which blows me away. It's, it's um, a bigger killer than all cancers combined, um, which when I was growing up, I always thought of heart disease as just a man's disease, um, but it's the number one killer of women, and it's really, really important that women go get um, checkups and make sure that their cholesterol is normal, their blood pressure, their blood sugar, their BMI. Um, just really, really important to stay on top of that stuff because it's a it's a silent killer. It's something that you can't see. Um, and Florence Henderson, who was a very, very dear friend of mine who I saw days before wow. she went into the hospital, um, and everyone was shocked that knew her because she had no no signs of what was going on. However, she, um, as a child, had uh, suffered from a heart murmur and um, um, spent about the last decade 
having heart problems. Um, she went into the emergency room, um, was not feeling right, and they discovered a uh, 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 valve leak that was severe. But fortunately, her mitral valve, mm -hmm. fortunately, they could repair it instead of replace it. Um, but in the end, um, you know, she died from heart disease. And, um, you know, she actually was in this uh, uh, charity. She walked the runway last year. Wow. In a, in a beautiful red dress. And um, so, you know, I'm here kind of honoring her and and all women who have suffered from this who are going through heart problems you know it it um, attacks a lot of women and hopefully you know through awareness we can bring those numbers down that is funny though because this is the one awareness thing that I think is really necessary I'm aware of a lot of diseases but as I remember growing up that there was some sort of rumor that like women just didn't die from heart attacks right that right. was like that well, was a, a I, thing yeah. I remember being yeah. taught. Yeah, it's such it's so and odd. It's not. Yeah, it's and crazy. It's not the case at all. Right. Yeah, it's crazy, and I, I wonder actually if it's always been that way, and we just weren't hearing about it because, mm -hmm. you know, back then too, I think it was all male issues that were out there and in the news, and and now you know that's not the case. You know, things are changing. So you, you stayed pretty close to Florence throughout. Very close, you yeah. know, yeah. I mean, we could not see each other for, for quite a while, but whenever we'd come together or see each other, um, it was like just, I mean, you know, such a such a deep bond and deep um, love and, and respect and, yeah. And so, so it, it did kind of come out of nowhere, even for people who knew. Her, her. family was in total shock. They wow. still are. We yes. all are. Yeah, because, I know? mean, for those of us that just knew her from television or whatever, yeah. any time, even till the end, any time she was on any sort of talk show or whatever, she was very full of life. So like, full of life. there was nothing that was breaking down, it would seem, about her. So full of life. Yeah. I mean, I thought she was going to go on for a long time. Yeah. 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 Well, listen, you should support this. You should go. Uh, yeah. uh, you will be Maureen McCormick at the Hammerstein Ballroom tonight. It's the uh, American Heart Association's Go Red for Women Red Dress Collection. It's presented by Macy's, uh, and it's for a really, really good cause. It yeah. is. It you know. is. Yeah, I'm I'm thrilled to to be here walking in this and and um, thrilled that the American Heart Association and Macy's are presenting this. And, yeah, I can't wait. Have you been in the Hammerstein Ballroom before? I don't think I have. It's a great venue. We were just talking That's about it right I've before heard, you came yeah. in. Yeah, it's a really good venue for – I've got a wrestling shows there, concerts there. Like nice. they really turn it into something – it's going to it's gonna be cool. It's I'm gonna so be nice. excited, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'll uh, be live. You love live. There we go. Like you guys. Right, live. You guys no are retakes. live. <laughs> yep, this whole thing. If you had said something, like if we go to break and you're like, oh, could you edit something out that I said? Could you, by the way, <laughs> could you edit everything I've said? No. By the way? Couldn't happen. Because we are on a break right now, right? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when do we start? Yeah, when, when do when, we start? When Wait, the... it was live when I walked in? <laughs> yeah. When does, oh, the, okay. when does the interview part of this <laughs> yeah. start? When do you guys start doing an actual show? Because <laughs> so far, well, listen, thank you so much for stopping yeah, thank by. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Good yeah, luck. And good tonight, luck with everything. Yeah.